Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a Pinkerton prototype, a sweet new Civivi, and 10 knives, make that 11, that I wish I had when I was in Jamaica. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Diabolique Sabobel, who commented on a kind of a show off uh, short I put up about uh, choosing a Bowie knife in the morning if I lived in the type of world where a Bowie knife were necessary. And uh, so you got a good view of my Bowie knife shelf. He says, I know envy is a sin, but I'm weak and I can't help myself. I just have to go for confession this week. And I say to you, Diabolique, here, well, I think I, I put a little French twist on that, but Diabolique, listen up. Uh, to be jealous is not a sin. To envy is sin, because uh, when you envy, you are both jealous and spiteful. You don't want them to have it, and you want to have it yourself. So just do what I do. Uh, be jealous. Uh, just think of me watching this old sword blade reviews, uh, his videos. They make me jealous, but I love the man. So I, I want him to have them too. I just want me to have his collection as well. So uh, jealousy over envy and then work on the jealousy. All right, Diabolik Sabobel, thank you so much for commenting. And thank you one and all for commenting. Um, I appreciate it. They keep wind in my sails. Uh, yes, wind in, in the sails, just like the catamaran I was on yesterday or two days ago, three days ago, I don't know, in Jamaica. Man, I see what they mean about Jamaica. It's pretty cool. The people are pretty awesome. Uh, all that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today in the front right, I had a classic, a modern classic, of course, but I had the uh, Spartan Knives, the Spartan Blades Harzy Folder. The Spartan Harzy Folder, as it's affectionately known, I love this thing. Combination to me of uh, Hinderer meets, uh, meets Strider meets Rick Hinderer Knives in a dark alleyway, and they hash it out. And this is what comes out of the deal. It is one of the stoutest knives in the collection, but also svelte, you know, it's not so uh, broad this way. It is a bit of a chunker. There's no uh, weight relief in there, but you know, we all know about this knife. And at this point, uh, all I need say is it's always a pleasure to have this in the pocket. And uh, I, I love that too. My logo etched in the side, uh, courtesy of Curtis Iovito. Thank you, sir. You are a gentleman and a scholar. So this was riding shotgun today. Uh, let's see, what else did I have? Um, well, I was trying to hold this back till, uh, till state of the collection, but I'll show it off then too, just as a record. Uh, but I was carrying my feel good Jack, uh, the new Jack Wolf knives, um, Jack knife based on the doctor's knife uh, of old. Now this is a, a pattern that I do not own besides this uh, feel good Jack. I'm going to get real close and, and catch some focus. Let's see if it will focus. Yeah, it's that carbon fiber. It's, it's dazzling the old camera, but it's got this beautiful Arctic Storm blue carbon fiber. It's got a full height hollow ground um, Warncliffe blade here of S90V. It is so thin and slicey. It, uh, each, each one, I swear, each new uh, Jack Wolf knife seems thinner and slicier, but maybe that's just. Um, perception. Cool thing about the doctor's knife is that the handle, uh, the spine and the dorsal section, if you will, are nearly parallel or, or sometimes completely parallel lines. And they are generally long knives that frequently uh, contained two blades a, uh, or two tools, a blade and then a sort of a spatula looking thing. It's a symmetrical sort of spatula like thing that after you, uh, after a house calling doctor, you know, uh, back in the day, doctors would come to your house. It was called a house call. The doctor would come in, open up his little black bag and make you a potion to drink down. And uh, what they would do is they would cut up a pill with the blade 
And then they would take the other spatula thing up, or actually, they would take the butt end of the knife. The pommel was always squared off and totally flat. And you would take a pill, you cut up the pill with the blade, and then you mash it up using the um, using the butt of the blade down here. And you get a powder and then you scrape it into a glass of water or alcohol and then you stir it up with that spatula. So a cool knife. I love the history of the doctor's knife, but I've never owned one. I got one for my dad who was a physician before he retired and uh, he carries that thing quite a bit case. Um, but I am so psyched that Ben Belkin decide, decided to uh, go this route uh, with his 13th release, or I guess it's 13th knife. 12th release um yeah because of the little bro beautiful beautiful knife i love this and this is the first run now where everything is carbon fiber five different flavors of carbon fiber and i love that blue that he uh, sent me thank you for sending this to me by the way ben if you are indeed listening uh but he sent me that blue arctic storm carbon fiber which is nice because it is it is the uh the very first Jack Wolf knife knife that I have, the Sharpshooter Jack, has the same material, and I like it. I I, I like having it, and uh, I like having two of them, is what I mean. And I also am especially fond of that carbon fiber, um, even though the others are dazzling. I think this I can live with, so to speak. Okay, and on my belt today, I had the TKL Knives Night Stalker. Uh, uh, soon to be uh, released to the open public at Blade Show in a couple of in 10 days or something like that in AEBL. Now I'm going to show this to you in the sheath, first of all, because uh, TKL Knives prides themselves, Tim Kell prides himself, as does the company, on their amazing sheaths, very thin top to bottom so that they cover just about uh, the same width of your belt. Uh, so very low profile in that in that scout position up front. What's that called? That has a different name. Anyway, parallel right up front, like scout position. Uh, now this you you might notice uh, is a cool clip and different than what usually ships with a TKL knife. Uh, this is the clip that he just designed, uh, co co-authored, if you will, with discrete carry concepts. Uh, so this works really great. Um, the other clip that they send is a plastic one, and it is also very good for in the waistband. But um, I do find that if you don't wear a belt or something like that, if you just want to slip it onto your gym shorts or whatever, you definitely want to go this route. Uh, I, I really like it. It's also a little bit more low profile. Okay, the knife itself. A beautiful... Oh, my gosh. I love this knife. Uh, AEBL stainless steel. And uh, that nickel boron coating uh, makes it very slick, and uh, it and also protects the blade. It's a it's a hard coating um, that will protect the blade. He started using that uh, as a blade protectant slash dry lubricant. I don't know. So it slips through the materials you're cutting uh, when he was only using 1095 and 80 cr 80 cr. ADCR V2. Um, but now with this AEBL, uh, which is more stainless, uh, probably not necessary for the for its um, stainless qualities, but really cool for making the knife uh, such that it will slip through materials very easily. Very, very nice. I love the sculpting, that grenade pattern sculpting on the handle. That is a three-tone uh, sort of camo, uh, olive drab, brown, and black. And let's talk about ergonomics for a second. Absolute dream. Uh, with ringed things, ringed implements, which I'm not so into these days, this has totally changed my mind. This is a beautifully designed ringed knife. Uh, keeps your keeps your knuckles aligned when you when you hold it uh, for a punch, and uh, is just a uh, just a very well done ring knife. Great blade, super incredibly sharp, as per all TKL knives. Uh, so just awesome. I also had on me, as usual, a emotional support knife. Today it was the Gambit by Shield and Knives and Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, this little sucker is a, a cool little. I cannot. It, this is. I gotta say, <laughs> uh, this is not an easy one to front flip on the left side for me. I'm not. I'm not sure why. Uh, but I think it might be my left hand. 
Uh, but a great, a great 154 cm blade uh, comes to a nice acute edge, a very nice uh, belly on it. And let's see, can I do it? Uh, uh, oh. Okay, and also a nice fuller, and all of those opening holes there uh, are really great for um, Spidey flicking. And then the size of this thing, it just fits in the hand very nicely. It has a menace to it that I like, sort of a demon barber of Fleet Street sort of menace. And I do like that quite a bit. There, a little more light on the situation. All right, so these were my knives today uh, for emotional support. I had the Gambit by designed by Dirk Pinkerton, made by Shielded Knives. I had the uh, TKL Knives Night Stalker. Had the old, uh, well, the brand new, I should say, Doctor's Knife from Jack Wolf Knives, the Feel Good Jack. He's the one we call Dr. Feel Good. And you know what I'm talking about if you're my age. Uh, and then this is uh, the Spartan Harzy Folder. Do love it. Do love it. Uh, okay, just talking about uh, Dirk Pinkerton, a, a knife maker slash designer that I'm, I, man, I just love his work. Well, I have a prototype uh, that he sent me a little while ago that he said, keep under your hat. And then um, he sent the same thing to a number of other people who didn't keep it under their hat. So he, he got to me and said, go ahead, you can show it off now. So I'm very happy to show off this beautiful um, Dirk Pinkerton inversion. Uh, you may remember the inversion from Kaiser and Dirk Pinkerton, which I just so happen to have right here. This is a, uh, I know, uh, Dave, I mentioned this old sword. He's got one of these, uh, Field Works, uh, someone who's going to be a guest on this Sunday's show, a, uh, a, a professional, we'll, we'll talk about him later, uh, has one of these, and a number of other people have, uh, have gotten this prototype. This is the original inversion, um, which I absolutely love. It is a classy titanium frame lock Pical with an optional um, wave opener on top, that disc you can wave it open uh, and just really an awesome knife. But uh, I'm not sure if Kaiser is making this anymore. I guess they probably discontinued it because this is the inversion that Mr. Pinkerton is working on uh, uh, to put under his own shingle. It's, it's in development. It is not a, an imminent thing. I think he's uh, perfecting and zeroing in. And I love what he's done with the blade here. A uh, couple of things he's done with the blade. You can see he took away that Tonto uh, shape and uh, went for a more hawk, hawk bill, a pointy, uh, sl drop pointed hawk bill, and uh, slenderized the um, opener there, which is cool. Uh, and then changed the handle material, made it a liner lock. It's much lighter. And um, also change the shape of the handle, contours of the handle. But the, the basic premise is there. It is a um, folding Pical knife. Looks a little odd uh, to, the, to the uninitiated eye. But uh, to those of us who know and like Pical style knives, you know they're not just for fighting. They are also really great utility knives. I mean, just look at this knife in a utility grip. Uh, you can just you know, do everything you'd want to do with it. But then if push comes to shove, you have a, a really effective fighting knife. Anyway, I just want to thank Dirk right now uh, for sending me this. Uh, I'm so honored. I think it's really cool to have a prototype, uh, especially, and to also see the development, see how the mind of great designers and great makers work. So I like, I uh, can't wait to see this thing come to fruition. I think he's working on the clip and, you know, lots of stuff is happening with this. So uh, be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, lastly, uh, I want to talk about the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife, uh, which will be happening tomorrow night. Uh, we will be giving away this beautiful Kaiser Roach, also courtesy of this old sword. Uh, this one is one of the new ones. I have one of the originals. Uh, this new one, man alive. They they really put some effort into that detent. It snaps open with a thora tie and it closes really easily. Uh, you know, definitely drop shutty, as we like to say. And a beautiful, beautiful canvas micarta handle. Feels great in the hand. I, ergonomically, that little hump is always stuck in my craw ever so slightly. Uh, but a, a great, great knife. Uh, so we'll be giving this away to one lucky, uh, lucky gentleman junkie tomorrow night on uh, uh, Thursday Night Knives. It's been two weeks and I already forgot the name. Uh, Thursday Night Knives, Eastern Standard Time. 
That's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. And uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Come check it out, and we will spin the Wheel of Destiny and see who gets this beautiful, beautiful knife. Putting that away, I have to say, uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to check out some knife life news, some interesting things happening there, as always. And then we will get on to State of the Collection and then the main topic right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, so something exciting and cool coming out from State and Union, which is K-Bar's small batch custom shop. Uh, We saw the Red Spacer K-Bar come out last year, I believe. The Red Spacer Doghead K-Bar, very cool. Pretty expensive, uh, exclusive build. Well, State and Union is coming out with a straight razor. How cool. I love straight razors. Uh, This one is called the 6412, I don't know, 6412 straight razor. Look at that. Uh, That is indeed a titanium handle uh, with a kind of a cool arced pistol grip to it. Uh, It's got it's 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 not just titanium, but it's titanium and rich light. Uh, So I believe the rich light is on top and the titanium is probably probably the liners. Uh, It's got a an interesting blade, too. Um, It's called a Kumai blade, Kumai blade with copper running down the middle on the Hamon line. So. Uh, just a stunning, beautiful thing. Uh, it comes in a nice uh, collector's wooden box for presentation. Uh, they only make a very limited amount of these. Look at that profile there. Manaj, that's beautiful. I really like that. Straight razors are pretty pretty compelling, aren't they? I mean, most knife guys must, must think that. Anyway, these are still available. No doubt they are pricey. I have not looked up the... Uh, I have not looked at the price on these, but for a collector, man, I highly, highly uh, want you to let me know what it's like if you get it. All right. So that is from State and Union. That's the 6412 straight razor. All right. Next, uh, we have from CRKT. Uh, So they have a new website coming out and uh, to commemorate the new website they are re-releasing a uh, a previously produced model a high-end limited edition version of the herein knife by designer duhara um now this is a hugely skeletonized sort of um uh, stiletto style knife a modern locking folder uh, but this time it's using different steels m390 blade steel titanium handle of course um, and look at the, it, it, if you can, if you're watching, you can see it's got some pretty complex milling and construction, uh, pretty cool. And it's got an interesting blade of M390 and this Damasteel called DS93X. So it's, uh, you know, it's a patterned blade and, uh, DS93X. I'm not exactly sure how they, uh, how it integrates in. I can see it right there with the patterns on the clip and on the blade, but they also mention M390. So I'm not sure if M390 is swirled into that Damasteel mix. Um, 300 pieces of this made uh, in honor of the new 2023 CRKT website made in Italy by Lion Steel. So check it out. Uh, If you are interested, it is there. Uh, next up from our good friend, Laren Thomas, the big brain of the knife industry, uh, I should say, probably the biggest brain of the knife industry. Lots of big brains, and we've talked to him right here on the show. Uh, but Laren Thomas is, a, is a, a, a different cut. You know, this man uh, got his PhD in metallurgy. He designs for work. He designs new automotive steels and for fun, designs blade steels and writes book after book about making knives and blade steels. And this latest one, the story of knife steel chronicles uh, the tool steel. And I think that that is so cool. Uh, so taking the story of steel, knife steel uh, through its paces. So you can kind of see 
uh, what development led to what. It aims for a broader audience than Knife Engineering, the very popular book that he released almost two years ago. And um, it's a, uh, he aims to have this also be a single volume where you can learn the whole history of knife steel, which I think is so cool. And he wasn't looking to make this book. It just sort of accidentally happened. I would love to accidentally write a book. Now, he didn't use the word accidentally, uh, but he said he kind of had all of this extra material from all of his research, and he had to sort of put it somewhere, and it all told a coherent story. Isn't that nice? Ought to be a brain. Nicely done, Laren. Hopefully, I bump into him at uh, Blade Show as I do. Okay, so that's from... Uh, Laren Thomas, check out his book, Last Up in Knife Life News. This one hit a little close to home, uh, even if it was 30 years after. I used to live in Philadelphia years ago uh, in the 90s, and it was, it was, it was rough uh, in the mid, early mid-90s in Philadelphia. And uh, I always had a knife on me. And this was before I was a, a, you know, a collector. I just had a couple of, I remember I used to carry a Fury serrated fury uh, with me everywhere all the time for years and definitely through my Philadelphia years, which was also art school years for me. Um, anyway, uh, I cannot believe that in Philadelphia, check this out, or I'm going to read it to you because uh, I won't be able to do it justice. Knife Rights has filed a federal lawsuit challenging the city of Philadelphia's ban on, and now check this out, quote, use or possession of any cutting weapon upon public streets or upon any public property at any time, as well as within 100 feet of any school. Uh, I, so to fight this fight, uh, that city is insane. And if you live there, uh, I love it. I had some great years there and it is a beautiful city with a great history, but man, the way they run it. Anyway, uh, joining Knife Rights in the case are Knife Rights members Keith Fetzerka and Scott Mele. And they are represented by attorneys John W. Dillon at the Dillon Law Group. So hopefully they give them hell. Listen to this. They're, uh, <laughs> they named as defendants the Philadelphia Police Con Commissioner. Now listen to this name. Danielle Outlaw. How do you like that? Outlaw. It's right there in the name. And the city of Philadelphia. Um, that is not to say that uh, I don't back the blue. I do 100%. But uh, sounds like Ms. Outlaw needs to update uh her view on knives. So luckily we have Doug Ritter and knife rights to help Philadelphia out of this jam because, you know, the criminals in Philadelphia aren't obeying that knife law, nor are they obeying any gun laws. So hopefully you won't have to either after Doug Ritter is finished with them. Doug Ritter at all is finished with them. All right. Well, that has been knife life news coming up on the knife junkie podcast we're going to check out a couple of new knives in the state of the collection and then 11 folders i wish i had in jamaica don't take dull for an answer it's the knife junkies favorite sign off phrase and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise like a t-shirt sweatshirt hoodie long sleeve tee and more even on coasters tote bags a coffee mug water bottle and stickers let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. An exciting new addition to my high value collection is the Civivi Cinesis, 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 I'm sorry, the Civivi Cinesis. And this is a beautiful clip point blade. It is large, as you can see, that's 14 C 28 N and um, burlap micarta on a steel frame lock. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a steel frame lock, nice and thin. So it, it's nice and light. You know, sometimes you get a steel frame lock in hand and it feels too heavy. Well, this does not. This is a, a really nice uh, feel to it. And though it is thin, it, okay, uh, let me back up and just say, even though it's thin, um, it does have a heft to it. If this were titanium and it were this thin, of course, it would feel lighter. But uh, there's, there's something very nice about having a large size knife like this being nice and svelte and easy in the pocket, but that maintains some sort of heft. And let me bring this in as a comparison here. Here's the uh, 
basically for size and concept comparison. Here's a bug out. And so you can see that this is a nice large size, uh, nearly four inch blade. Um, and this bug out, uh, before I got these micarta handles on them, which gave it a little bit of weight, it felt so light I could hardly take it seriously. That's what, uh, that's what having a steel frame lock on this being nice and thin gives me. It gives me just enough heft for me to want to take it seriously and not think that it's being so thin is going to be uh, a drawback. The blade is very slicey. It is a flat, um, yeah, it's a flat ground blade and gives you a lot of, uh, looks like a lot of resharpening room there and a nice um, finger choil. Uh, I love that swoop up on the clip there. It's it's very Civivi we send cut uh, this this clip point blade. I think it's very very beautifully designed. Um, yeah, I, I just like that shape. Uh, but as you can see, that edge is oof, nice and sharp. This thing is a beautiful cutter. Um, so it looks good, it feels good, and man, it cuts well. Cuts really well. Uh, nice and thin and nice and cool. All I want is a different clip for it, and I have it on order. So I'm going to see if it fits. I have tried those clips, the aftermarket uh, Civivi clips. Uh, the screws that they send don't always work. You have to hunt down longer screws to get through some of the handle materials. Uh, but this one is a great. I highly recommend it because it was only like 40 bucks. Or no, wait, 50, 55 bucks. So very inexpensive for a great steel 14C28N from a great company uh, making awesome knives. All right, so that's the Civivi Synesis. All right, next up, I hear the hound uh, raising cane upstairs. Uh, next up, this is the Feel Good Jack. I won't go into it uh, as I did before, but I just want to, chro uh, not chronicle, I just want to um mark this down for posterity that's what we'll I, i'm missing the word so I, I want to record this here uh just so i know in the future days that this is when i got this knife i love this feel good jack uh this is available has been for a week and a half now from all of the purveyors online purveyors that you have come to uh, find that have the jack wolf knives and what's great is that ben has been able through his success to up his production so they're not as hard to find as the first few models were. You know, they sold out immediately and then that was it. Now he's uh, putting a little bit more um, uh, units, as the sick man likes to say, out there into the wild. So that is the uh, Feel Good Jack, actually, microphone. Uh, this is the, the, these are the knives I was putting for microphone. Beautiful talk. And uh, I would say seven and a half pull. And you know, some people write the pull out. Ben does the pull out and the push back. And uh, I can't get there yet. So I'd say seven to seven point seven five. You know, is the pull. Uh, we're gonna do that, uh, which I guess I just did. All right. So that is that. Do check it out. And uh, last up in the state of the collection is a um, impulse buy that I'm glad I impulse bought. It's Bowie uh, from Cold Steel. Uh, yes, this is, I think, an 8C or uh, an OS 8A. It's not a fancy pants steel or anything like that. Uh, but that three and a half inch clip point blade is sharp as can be. It's got a really nice um, uh, saber grind here. And if you know Cold Steel, you know they do their OS 8 and their OS 10. They do all of their blade steels really, really well in terms of heat treat and edge. This thing is very good and look at how small that handle is you, but you get a full grip on that if you got the giant uh, meat hooks maybe that pinky slips off but uh for your money you get a very very nice grip and something that is highly highly concealable and carryable it's very light and it's a neck knife i have it with the string there but i don't use it as a neck knife though i i did when i first got it and it rode comfortably it's not it's light enough but I like to uh, do the deck cord thing, you know, where I I tie it around my belt and then I just sort of put it in my waistband. And then when I need it, you just, you know, it just sort of rides in the waistband. You just tug it out like this. And then the, the sheath is left dangling. Um, 
a great, great knife uh, for very little. If you need a fixed blade, if you want, I mean, this would be a great work knife. You know, if you're someone who's uh, using knives all day long, opening and th this or the Tonto version of this, they also have a taunt, the serrated Tonto version. I think these would be great because they're small and low profile, but you could have a fixed blade on you uh, that you know is going to go the distance. So that is the mini tack Bowie. Do check it out. Uh, okay, uh, all of that being said, this was one of the ones that uh, I could have used that I, I would have used in Jamaica. Now, wasn't really thinking in terms of fixed blades, uh, but I was thinking in terms of folders. Before I went, I decided I need to be more responsible than I have been in the past. I am not going to try to smuggle knives in into the country uh, just so that I can walk around with a knife in my waistband so that no one sees it. Like I did uh, when I went to another, well, when I went to Punta Cana, that's what I did. And it was a bad idea. And I, I, I don't recommend you do that. And so I decided not to do it this time. I'm like, I don't want to end up in Jamaican prison. You know, I just don't. So I decided, um, I decided, well, I forgot to mention this up front, but uh, instead of these knives I'm about to show you, I did come up with a couple of improvised weapons uh, that I brought um, just in case. Of course, I didn't even take them out except for uh, this one over here. But uh, so I had a couple of different things. Uh, let me just show you these real quick. Uh, one is a flail. So I took this giant nut here. I'll hold this under the Knife cam. I took this giant nut, the biggest one I could find at Home Depot, just dropped it in the bottom of my bag like it was forgotten from days gone by. And then I brought some paracord. And then when you take this and put it through here, I saw this uh, uh, on a YouTube video. I can't remember the guy's name, but he's a CIA dude and he talks about cool stuff. And he was talking about improvised weapons and this little flail works awesome. And then in this video, he slams it into a car window and shatters it. So I've uh, I have had this for a couple of weeks, and I've found that the shorter the lead, this is like 12 inches, the more wicked this thing is. So I had this with me, though I never assembled it or even removed it from my bag or thought about it. Um, I also had this through the airport, on the plane, everything. And this is my ventilator pen. It's a simple uh, bit round stick. Um, and this is a uh, Ed Calderon trick that he taught. He actually talked about it on the show, I think. Uh, but Really, you, you take the pen, it can be a crystal or whatever, uh, one of the one of these Bic pens, and you remove the ink. And then you can even do this on the rug. I did this on the rug at work. Uh, you just rub it against the rub it against the rug really quickly and it will sand it down, sand down that plastic material. So basically what you do is you create a little hypodermic needle. You sand it at an angle and you create a hypodermic needle. The back, you take the back off. So that, so that air goes through there and liquid, and this is your weapon. And they say uh, that it has been used to jam into people's necks, and then you slap it in there, and then this is stuck in their body, shooting blood out, and it's very, very little you can do. But even if you don't go that far with it, it's just a pointy thing that you can have with you in a place that you're not supposed to have pointy things. Incidentally, this is what I used to fill out all of our customs forms and everything. Uh, so it was a, a double duty uh, thing. And then lastly, uh, before we go on to the knives, uh, the weapon, <laughs> the last weapon I had on me, and I've done trained with this a lot in various martial arts classes, but a magazine, uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This isn't the one I had with me. Uh, the one I had with me is now gone. Uh, but uh, you take this catalog or magazine and you... Uh, just like Jason Bourne, you roll it up, uh, open side first, pages first. It doesn't matter how neat you are. You do want the spine on the outside, though. And if it's a thick magazine, that spine turns into something pretty nasty. Make it tight. Uh, take some some of your <laughs> daughter's headbands, in my case, or if you have rubber bands, that's good. Uh, but I didn't have any rubber bands with me. So just take some hair bands and... Get that on there. And now you have a weapon. Uh, if if you would, Jim, come to the main cam. I mean, this thing is nasty. It is it is like having a piece of wood. You just don't have the density. Uh, but And then you can use that, and you can do a lot of different uh, stuff with a magazine, just with a magazine. It is, it is handy to have it 
uh, battened it down like that or taped if you have the time. But then then it starts looking like a weapon. You carry a, around a magazine and two hair ties and you're just a dad walking around. No one's going to think anything. And it's even if you roll it up and do all that stuff, no one's going to think anything. But it's something that you can have to somewhat level the playing field if there's some sort of fist fight or some, uh, you know, I don't know. But I just wasn't going to go there feeling defenseless. Uh, so I brought those with me anyway. What I was hoping for uh, was or wishing for were one of these because I was so paranoid about having our family stopped at customs because I have so many times by knives I had forgotten that I didn't even bring a cigar cutter with me. And I brought cigars and then I got a Cuban cigar while I was there. Uh, and luckily, I ran into someone who had one and was able to use theirs. And then I bought one. But uh, I have been really into Jack Wolf knives as my cigar cutters recently. So. I was wishing for a knife. The first one I was thinking of that would be great because it's so hot down there. It's unbelievably hot, especially if you're a yank like myself. Wow, it was hot. So everything you wear is light and beautiful. Linen. Uh, it was a wedding. I was down there for a wedding. And so linen at the wedding and that kind of thing. Everything is light. You know, you're walking around in your bathing suit and shorts. So you got to have a light knife. The first thing I thought of was the pyrite. I would have loved to have the CJRB pyrite with me. Uh, because for a number of reasons, first of all, it's light, it's relatively, um, well, and it's small at, at 3.2 inches in blade length, and it's relatively non-threatening looking. Now, the black one with the Warncliffe blade might look a little more menacing, but, you know, you got the blue, it's kind of happy, it's little, it's not so bad, but also it's light. And then, you know, for those uh, dull moments, which there weren't any, uh, you could fidget with it. Uh, I damaged my left thumb. So if I'm not as fidgety with these knives, you'll have to forgive. Um, the one thing that plays into all of these is that the sand there was very fine. So um, I would have had to deal with sand in the knives. So maybe it's, maybe it's fine I didn't bring a knife. But there were a number of times where it would have come in handy. First thing I thought of would have been this pyrite. Another knife. Now, this one would have been great in the cool outfit I was wearing because it is a cool and unique knife and is, uh, but is also kind of dressy because it's a titanium frame lock. And that is the Crystal Knives Aurora designed by Ivan Bragnitz um, of, where is he from? Ukraine or Belarus or is he Russian? I, I'm sorry, now I can't remember uh, where he's from, but he designed some really cool knives like the Arcona Nettle I have is also by him. But this one, is just beautiful and it's light and it's not only light because of all of that weight relief in the titanium handle scales here but it's very light because of this giant fuller uh, that has been um, removed from there and this is a take on the traditional russian knife so maybe he is russian the yakut yakut i believe that's a russian knife uh, anyway, and uh, that big fuller is a signature of that Yakut knife. This is really thin and slicey. And I feel like in that fuller area, they even, yes, it's more hollow here. But I feel like uh, if it weren't, uh, it would, if it, if this were fully ground, it would be more of a hollow grind than a flat grind. It just is so thin is what I'm trying to get at and slicey. Great knife, very fidgety. Very fidgety, especially with the thumb. I do like the thumb uh, on this. This has a full, this is all jimping on the side. It's like rows of jimping and uh, a beautiful knife. This would have looked cool tucked in the waistband of uh, of my uh, my wedding getup. Now, this knife, this next knife came to mind uh, more thematically. I was thinking about light knives and then the length that I like of uh, more more like the Aurora than the Pyrite. And and uh, so on the on the lighter but larger end of things, I thought about this, the TRM Adam. This would have been perfect for Jamaica uh, because of the lightness, of course, in the in the shorts and linen pants and stuff. This would have been uh, a fine carry. But the color, that beautiful uh, GL Hansen and Sons G Carta in purple and green i love that uh sort of uh well that green is 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 present in the jamaican flag and you do see uh the uh, yellow black and green 
all over the place there. It's pretty cool. Uh, yellow stands for the sunshine. Black stands for the complexion of the residents. And green stands for the lushness of the land. I learned that on the bus. Uh, so this would have been great. Nice and thin. Good for steak. I ate a lot of steak. <laughs> a good steak knife. And just a classy carry to pull out. And, and you know, there are a lot of activities. And you're, so you always have a wristband on. And yes, I know you can take it off without a knife. But I prefer not to. And that would have been great for that. But also, in a pinch, um, defense. Uh, next up is, this is a not very, very non-threatening knife. And I think that it would have been great to have there, uh, purely for utility. This also would have taken, taken care of my cigars and, uh, and just would have been good to have on me, uh, nice and light also has the fidget factor. And, you know, with travel, there is a lot of waiting around. Then again, I wouldn't have this in the airport where I did most of my waiting. Uh, but also, uh, I live and travel with three females and i say females because they're not all women and they're not all girls so i'll just say female humans and they all take a long time to get ready and so there is some pacing and uh, i do find that if i pace and flip a knife they they go quicker uh, because they just want it to stop because it's so annoying um, so this would have been great for getting ready for the wedding which we almost missed just kidding just kidding baby uh okay putting this one down and picking up the next one is also in a similar category, uh, a little more threatening because it's a little more pointy, but it's got that awesome FRN handle. And that's not something you hear too often, but it's got that awesome FRN handle that's nice and light and also a beautiful color. I like that uh, deep blue. Um, this is the S110V lightweight version of the Manix 2 by Spyderco. And um, this was a gift from the great Shane Gables, edgy American. and. Uh, I just love this thing. I love this thing. I love using it. I, I, of course, like the sentimental factor of it, but I had been sleeping on the Mannix for so long and just not getting one and never buying one when I was in a Spider Co. phase. And his sending this to me is, uh, man, I'll never forget it. And, and I love this damn knife. I love that it has belly and that it has a point right down, like below center line. So you still get the benefit of that uh, leaf-shaped blade. It's like a spear point blade, actually. Uh, it's just on a slight tilt from the rest of the handle. Um, great utility. It would be great for lots of things. Um, and that S110V is insane. Uh, this is made in Colorado, US made knife. Uh, next up, I was thinking of this one because uh, oddly enough, I wasn't thinking of this one for defense, uh, which is its obvious uh, use. I was thinking of it for its robustness its lightness, and then its awesome utility. Uh, this is the Microtech Troodon. Now, this one in particular, the utility on this one in particular, because it's double-edged, double-edged with the serrations on the top edge. So it just means if I got lost in the jungle, which I didn't come anywhere near, but I would like an authentic, more authentic experience if I ever go back to Jamaica. Uh, but, you know, say that you need a knife and uh, you, you need, you know, if something really comes up and you need those two edges uh, and you're out of the country and you have no options, this would be a good one to have. Um, there, are, there are some drawbacks, of course, in having a double edge knife, but there, there are some real, real benefits. And then defensively with this, you know, if, if you didn't want to have to, you know, use the blade, all Microtechs feel great with the blade in and you're just holding the handle. This is just like made like a Kubaton. And then you have that um, you have that glass breaker on the back to the attitude adjuster. You hit someone on the back of the hand with that who grabs you. Oh, my God, that's going to hurt so badly. So uh, obvious uh, an obvious uh, advantage as a defensive knife for defensive tasks. But really, I was thinking about this in terms of, like I said, the lightness, robustness, but the the uh, the task diversity you could you could get. Uh, with the with the two blades, with the two edges, I should say. All right, next up, probably my most carried in the super hot weather. Uh, had to have the bug out on this list. Uh, this one has the um, Allen Putnam aftermarket micarta scales and the, um, what is that called? The uh, uh, Snaggletooth MF. Uh, I put that on there originally because this was my inside pocket uh, uh, winter knife. And... Uh, 
I like to be able to just reach in the pocket, pull it out and have it open. Uh, but a great one again for in the waistband or in the pocket of super light um, shorts. I love those kind of stretchy shorts that you can use as bathing suits and as a regular shorts and they tend to be very light and this is just perfect goes in there it's nice and thin uh disappears in the pocket you got a small discreet clip and a 3.25 inch blade which isn't too uh threatening uh this is probably the one if not the if not the last knife on this list this is probably the first one i would take the benchmade bug out i just have the most experience carrying this in that kind of weather. And I think it would do, do great. Uh, also just a great all purpose light knife. Next up, speaking of great all purpose light knife is the Finch Cimarron. Uh, this one also, like I said, thin light has a good look to it. It looks like a lifestyle, um, accessory and anything that looks as, uh, you know, less weapony is probably, the best kind of knife to travel with, uh, if I'm thinking about it. This one, nice and slender, blade, uh, blade like a Quaken, goes completely in the handle, which I really like. Sculpted titanium pocket clip, light, thin, svelte, nice long 3.4 inch blade. 14C28N isn't going to rust on you too quickly, uh, except it does seem to have a bit of a blasted finish to it. Um, sort of. So I don't know if that actually is going to lead to more rust. I know on my old OS 8 um, Cold Steel Spartan, it did. I had one of the old blasted ones. A great knife. This would have been good in the in the pocket. Uh, for the wedding and for most utility, this thing would have been tremendous. Nice and thin. Looks kind of dressy. It looks very dressy, but it's a it's such a great design. It's very utilitarian, uh, very stylish, very utilitarian, and also very easy to carry all in one um, package. It's also fun because you can open it up uh, with the thumb studs or you can use the front flipper. It's a great front flipper. This is the um, Artisan Sirius designed by Ray Laconico right there on the spine. I, I think Ray Laconico is a great designer. Uh, invited him on the show, and he very politely declined. He's not into public speaking, he said, uh, but who knows? Maybe I can work on him. But uh, until I do, nice, thin, contoured handles. Look at this from this pr perspective. And then that fuller in the handle, um, your fingers wrap around and nestle themselves right in that fuller. So just a great knife. Also, drop shutty. Um, very, very fun to fidget with. Uh, I don't carry this one much. I think I'm going to start bringing it back out. Um, I was going to, for a while, give it away, and then I just decided to keep it. Uh, second to last in this list, uh, this is one I've been carrying kind of around the house a bit recently. Uh, this is the Hadros uh, by Civivi. This is designed by um, Dylan Mallory. Uh, you can really see that in that handle design, um, but uh, I, I really like Dylan Mallory's designs, and he's a really nice guy. He's another guy who just doesn't really want to come on the show. Uh, but every time I've met up with him at Blade, he's he's a really gracious guy and a very talented uh, designer. Um, and this one I love because of that nice long worn cliff. And it's not that long; it's three point five inches. But I, that that swooping um, that drop to the tip is nice and long, which makes it uh you uh, thrusty as well as utilitarian with that straight edge so i like any knife that kind of flexes that tactical way you know uh it also would be great in reverse grip and call grip um people say why would you turn it in like this um well i say well you know all the all the pakal reasons because it's good for that sort of natural arcing motion that your body makes uh your arms and joints make but also um when you're applying a lot of force in a folder, you kind of want the guarantee that it's not going to fold on your fingers and doing it that way uh, puts all the pressure on the stop pin in the back and not on the lock, which can fail easier than the stop pin. Like I'd say probably by, by a lot. So um, this would be excellent in that grip if you, if you needed it, but really you're just going to use this to open up mail and boxes and, um, and other stuff, whatever you, whatever you do, cutting your steak, um, 
That's the Civivi Hadros. Oh, this, by the way, um, 14C28 and a great, great budget steal. Uh, a lot of our trusted favorites out there in the knife world love 14C28. And I know that I love it because uh, I can keep an edge on 14C for a long time just with my usage. And then I do know that it sharpens really quickly and you can get a razor sharp edge like pretty, pretty easily on 14C. Last up, it, this had to be on the list. Um, this is this and the bug out are, are the primaries. The primary uh, smuggle in country knives. Uh, this one has been there a couple of times, um, just not Jamaica. And it is the cold steel, the pink cold steel broken skull. Um, the broken skull is a great knife. It is now called something else by cold steel and it's got different materials. But this, this was when it was the Steve Austin broken skull. Uh, before that, it was the Lone Star Hunter, and you know they've used the same plat, um, the same profile. It's just kind of changed materials and and platform a bit over the years. And this is during the Broken Skull by Steve Austin phase. Obviously, Steve Austin didn't design it, but he put his name to it. Um, and I don't even care anymore. Like I don't even see that billboarding. It's almost part of the charm. A great knife. This is CTS XHP. This was my in the waistband carry for year. You know, years well, i guess three or four years that's years um and i got that pink aluminum snaggletooth mf on there so you can just pull it out and have it ready to go i got it in pink for the cognitive dissonance of it i i got this knife uh before our first trip to the dominican republic uh years ago and um man that was stupid uh don't do that don't do that don't don't go through that phase i'm telling you <laughs> You just, it's not worth it. You don't want to end up in a Dominican prison because you couldn't stand not to be without a knife. What you do is what the smart guys do and go there. And if you really need a knife, buy one when you're there. Go to a grocery store and buy a cheap knife and then throw it away when you're done. Um, but this thing has ultimate utility with that full height, flat ground, CTS, XHP um, coated blade. This thing is just wicked. And it's so thin and so light. Those G10 slabs have no liners. It's just, but you can't, let's see. I can't really squeeze it. I guess I could a little tiny bit, but uh, nothing like the FRN on the bug out when I first got that. So this had to make the list. This is probably uh, travel knife Supreme right here. It's it, because of its four inch blade. I mean, it's, it's probably the most capable uh, in the lot here. So, well, okay. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that because I then I peaked that Mannix and I thought could, the Mannix could give it a run for its money. OK, so 11 folders I wish I had in Jamaica. I did not have them, uh, but we can think wistfully. Well, thanks for joining me on that journey. If you couldn't join me on the journey to Jamaica, you could uh, join me right here. And it took a lot not to try and use the cheesy dad doing the Jamaican man thing here because I was doing it a lot to stick in the craw of my girls, uh, and it worked. So join us uh, on Sunday for a great interview. We're going to have Fieldworks on the show, Ryan Atkinson. He's like a real-life Liam Neeson from Taken. And uh, also be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives when we uh, give away this beautiful uh, Kaiser Roach in 154 CM. Amazing action, as you just saw. And... Um, contoured canvas micarta you can also become a patron by scanning the qr code uh right there you can become a gentleman junkie or you can go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon and if gentleman junkie is a little too rich for your blood which it would be for me probably um check out the other levels of support we have um and if not just watch listen comment and share with a friend it all helps all right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me on the Knife Junkie Podcast. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.